Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you're in for a real treat. My name, my name is John Pelly, and I'm a board member of the MIT Enterprise Forum for New York City. A uh, quick rundown about us. Uh, the MIT Enterprise Forum is a nonprofit dedicated to fostering and encouraging the tech and entrepreneurship community here in New York City. We regularly organize expert panels, fireside chats, and workshops such as the one we're about to enjoy this evening. Of course, currently they're all virtual on Zoom, um, but they're all very informative, very interesting, and, and very useful for your careers. Uh, an annual membership to the MIT Enterprise Forum costs only $100 and entitles you to all of the events such as these. We're up to about two to three events per month, so it's a really good deal. There's also a good bit of networking that can be done as well amongst all of our members. If you're interested in more information, you can check our website out at mitefnyc.org. That's mitefnyc.org. So now we'll take you to the main event. Uh, Jyoti Singhvi is back to teach us how to communicate effectively and most importantly, strategically to accelerate our careers. That strategic aspect is something Jody has been very insistent on uh, emphasizing. I think that's really interesting. I'm really excited to hear what she means by that. Uh, last April, some of you may remember that Jody hosted an extremely powerful, very interesting session on how to speak and communicate effectively to your colleagues, bosses, peers, etc. So we're really excited to hear this part two of this session and learn more about the next steps we can take to communicate very effectively and strategically. Jody has been a speaker for over 30 years. She is the CEO of Ace Group, an ed tech firm which trains professionals and entrepreneurs in presentation, communication, and public speaking skills. She has interviewed and hosted many executives, CEOs, and chairmen of Fortune 500 companies. Jody also founded a luxury goods company which sells in Neiman Marcus. Jody has extensive corporate experience at Cartier, IBM, and KPMG. In addition, Jody has earned degrees from Harvard and MIT. With that, I'm thrilled, honored, and excited to hear what Jody has to teach us this evening. And Jody, I will hand it to you. Please take it away. Thank you so much, John. This is uh, this is a treat again. I love speaking with MIT Enterprise Forum. Thank you very much. And I um, invite all our guests to give a big round of applause for our host today, John Pelly and Gang Tan. And I know Colette is also in the background, very, very um, instrumental in um, you know, doing a lot of operational things. So none of these amazing talks would happen without John and gang. So really appreciate that. And welcome everybody. Um, a lot of you guys may have already heard from me in the past. If you haven't, I'm Jyoti Singhvi. John, thank you so much for the, for the um, great introduction. Really appreciate that. So everybody can hear me, uh, right? I would love for this to be an uh, to be a participative session, interactive session. Uh, I see a lot of you guys are rolling in. I'm going to get started uh, in, with the presentation in just a little bit. Just a few ground rules here. So this is a, going to be about an hour and a half workshop. It's mostly workshop session. Uh, and uh, if you have paper, pen, pencil, something to write with, write on, please bring that. Feel free to uh, bring a drink or a coffee or whatever makes you happy. We would love for this to be, you know, a pleasant, pleasant environment. And uh, time and again, I'm going to ask you to maybe respond in the chat box here. Also, this session is for you. I want this to be useful for you. So if you have questions, please type them in in the Q&A section. That way we can easily get to the questions, most likely towards the end of the conversation. But if we have time, I might take a break and I might get to some questions in the middle of our workshop too, if possible. But keep sending your questions in the, um, in the Q and A box and then put in your comments in the chat box, okay? So before we get started, let me ask. Hi, Elliot. Hi, Elsie. Oh, so nice to see you. I see a lot of names that I recognize. Let me just say hello to you guys. And when I say hello to you, could you please type back hi to me? Hi, Ankit. Hi, Dana. Hi, um, Elsie, Gail, Gordon. Hi, Helen, uh, Ellen. Sorry, I know that. Jocelyn, hello. Carla, hello. Katrina, hello. 
Ken, hello. Lena, hello. Mercedes, hi. Michelle, Michael, hello. Nicholas, hi. Patrick, hi. Ralph, hello. Uh, Sherry, Shari or Sherry, sorry. Srishti, hello. Um, Eunice, okay. I think, yeah, I got a lot of people. And if you come in later, just say hello um, to us. So welcome, welcome. Um, grab a drink, grab paper, pencil. And let's dive right in. Who is, let me, here's a big question. Who is ready to rock 2021? It may not seem likely, but this is a fresh start we all have. Who is ready to rock 2021? If you are, yes, I am. Type it in here. Definitely type it in here. And what I'm going to do here is this. Okay. I will now. John, yay. Yes, Alain, absolutely. I will also start, I just want to see the readiness before I get into the, the conversation. If you are not ready, I can't start. So if you're ready, please share, please share your enthusiasm because this is what this conversation is going to be about. All righty. So what we're talking about today is the most critical pillar for your success and that's strategic communication. Why do I say that? And I'm going to get into that in a little bit here. If you want to get in touch with me, um, you can email me here, jyoti at post.harvard.edu. I am uh, an MIT alum, but there's something that's going on with my MIT emails. I don't get them. So this is the best email to reach out to me. And you can check us out at the acegroup.com. It is group with an E in the, back, in the end. All right. This is my background with John Sheer. This is what we're going to be talking about. What is strategic communication and why is it important for your career success? Actually, career, life, impact, success, anything. Strategic conversation or communication is very important. How do you leverage it to make the most of your career goals, your professional goals, your business goals, and your life goals? Then we're going to go into achieving goals for 2021, and we're going to do a little bit of work together there. And how can, be, how can you be an effective communicator? There are seven things you can do to be an effective communicator, and we're going to go into that. I will end our workshop around 7-ish, 7, 7, 10, and then I'll open it up to questions. But if you have questions, you know, from now until then, just type them in. Don't hold them, right, so that we can see it. All right. So I said that strategic communication is one of the two most important pillars for your success. What is the first pillar? This is this whole, you know, roof, this beautiful um, building, let's say the building, we will call this on top here, your career, right? So the first one, which we all have heard, and we have been taught since we were little kids, hard work, right? Hard work is a key to your success. Yes, it's a very important pillar to your certain success. I'm going to take it a step further. It's not just hard work. It's the product of your work, right? You could maybe not work hard, but you work smart. And the product that you're going to produce is, is definitely critical. So uh, by product, I mean what? Whatever you're producing, depending on what you do. It's not just a physical product. It could be a service. Or if you are part of a team at an organization, what is it that you're producing? Are you in marketing and you're producing collateral and campaigns? Are you in finance and the various spreadsheets are your product? Or the various, um, or are you in operations and it's just a whole, um, you know, process or cycle of whatever part of operation you are in, that's your product, so that's your product, right? I don't mean a physical product, but whatever you do, whatever is the outcome of your work. Is your product very very important right your knowledge your expertise your your technical expertise your focus your diligence again your work your smart work and your hard work everything goes into that pillar okay this is what we've always been taught now what we've not been taught is that strategic communication is the second most important pillar on which stands and rests this house or this gorgeous building this gorgeous structure, which is your career and life. How many of you have ever been told that, that strategic communication is as important as, as your work, the product of your work, 
in terms of your career success. Please write that down. If you have been told, yes, you have been, if you knew that, yes. If you didn't know about that or have not been told until lately, recently, put no. Let's just go in there. I want to take a look into the chat box. I just want to see where we all stand. Yes, 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 yes. Well, um, so the new question I'm asking is, okay, a lot of people have been told that strategic communication is important in terms of your career success. Okay, if you've not been told, yes. And I guess a lot of reasons are nobody at work ever says that is because they just keep want you, wanting you to do that work, keep doing that work, right? But you do believe it, right? Thanks, Ellen. Okay. All right, if you just want to write them down here, let me know uh, what you guys have heard or thought or believe in, right? All right, so now we have these two pillars which are really necessary to hold up the structure of your work. Well, sorry, your, your career, your professional life, your business, whatever it is. Also in personal life, which relationship lasts without strategic communication, without communication? Any relationship? I mean, there is communication. Maybe the relationship with you and your pet, but there's communication there too. Right? There's a lot of communication there. One more thing I want to tell you. Communication, there are four aspects of communication. Verbal, right? Whatever we're going to say. Nonverbal, your face, your expressions, your, your voice, your tonality, your voice modulation, the way you behave, the way you carry yourself, your body language right? The way you use the space, the nonverbals, very, very important, right? The third is listening. Listening. That is an important part because communication is a two-way street. So you speak, but you also need to listen. Very, very important. And then the fourth one is written communication. So we have verbal, nonverbal, written, and listening. Every one of them is very, very important. Most of the times, unfortunately, we think that communication is just spoken communication. That's, that's very, very limited in, in the definition. Two of the very, very big aspects of communication are what? It's the nonverbals. Even if you're not saying anything, you're saying so much. You're saying a lot. And we could go into those examples later. Even if, and, and communication breaks down, if the listening part doesn't happen or doesn't happen effectively. So all four of them are very important. Feel free to take notes, please. Um, you know, here's what happens. I love content. I love to learn and educate myself. And I know you do too. But we listen to something and it resonates. It makes sense. But then we are on with our lives, busy lives, you know, our deadlines, our responsibilities, and we forget what we just heard about 15 minutes ago. So feel free to take notes so that you can go back to the notes and use them later. All right, now, what happens if I remove that pillar of strategic communication? My, my structure starts falling and the structure is the structure of my career or your career or your business, right? If you take away communication from life, from a relationship, that relationship starts crumbling. So this is a little bit of an exaggerated view of what happens. I just want to make it visual. What I really want to bring to life here is a lot of times when we come to a seminar or a workshop like this, people think that I want to be a great presenter or I want to be uh, an articulate communicator in the meetings, share my ideas effectively, or I want to speak with confidence. Those are most of the things, or I want to influence more. Those are most of the, I mean, those are very, very important things, but strategic communication is not limited to just those. Yes, those are very important, but there's a lot more to strategic communication. And that's what we are not made aware of. So imagine, just close your eyes. Imagine you are blindfolded and you are, just close your eyes, imagine you're blindfolded and you're taken on a plane to a completely new land. You have no idea which country you are in, which city you are in. They, they're, they're very nice to you. You're not kidnapped. This is part of a project. Okay, they're nice to you. They'll give you some good food and drinks and et cetera, et cetera, right? You're taken in this space, probably some kind of a building. Then they leave you in a big room. 
big, big, big. It's not even a room. That's an understatement. Think about it. It's a big, big hall. And they say, this is your space where you're going to live for the next month. There's one caveat to that. And you have to be productive, right? There's one caveat to that. That, that entire room is completely dark. There are no windows. There are no uh, skylights. There's no nothing. It's absolutely dark. Even at 2 p.m. in the middle of the day, it's dark. So you open your eyes and you're like, and it's a huge space, huge space, right? Almost like an arena, but it's closed, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, I don't, this, this seems like an arena or this is like some big hall, which is so empty. I'm getting tired. I want to sleep. Where do I sleep? There's nothing to sleep on, right? You sleep on the floor because you don't find any furniture, right? You sleep. Now, the food just comes to you automatically. You, you, you know, you're not going hungry or anything. Maybe they'll slide it in and then you get it. No light is coming in. Just, just play with me here, right? Uh, just bear with it. Now, after one month is over, they come in. You survived. You did, you, they opened the doors. You survived. You did really well. Congratulations. Here is the bonus. There is the prize or whatever it was. You were participating in some study or something. That's what it was, okay? They open, they, they turn on the lights, okay? They turn on the lights and you look around. Oh my gosh, this room has all the most amazing furniture I could ever imagine. It has this comfortable bed, all these couches, the, the desk. The desk has a lamp. It has a lovely laptop or, or with a large screen that I could have used. It also has a basketball hoop that I could have used for exercise. Oh, they also have exercise equipment. They have so many other things. Oh, there was a refrigerator. I mean, yeah, like there could be some light from the refrigerator, but it was completely, you know, um, uh, covered up. What I'm trying to draw your attention to is this. We all have been living in this very, very dark room where we were not made aware that these tools and strategies of effective communication skills are absolutely there for us to really boost our careers. We've been living in completely blindsided by this, by this um, I don't know who created this, who created this darkness around us. And it was darkness, right? Because we were not aware. There are only certain things in my life and life of my clients that have drawn attention and shown a, a light on the importance of the strategic communication. So I, what I'm trying to do with today's conversation for you is turn on the lights, remove that blindness so that as much as you work hard towards creating the product you need to create, you work equally smartly and in a planned and organized fashion towards that strategic communication. So it's been a misconception that just hard work is the key to success, right? We just heard that. It's strategic communication also. Here's a little easy formula, simple formula. W plus C is equal to S. So W is what? W is your work, the product of your work. C is your strategic communication, communication. S is equal to success. W plus C is equal to S, so you can um, write that down or remember that. Now, imagine, so here's another thing, another analogy. Imagine this person, and, and again, I know that you know, but this is just such an important part to understand. I just wanted to tell it through another story, right? Because most of us, all we do is, I have these goals for 2021. I have these goals for five, the next five years. This is what I want to do with my life. This is what I want to do with my career. And we get at it and we get down and we work and work hard and work hard and work hard and push and push. And sometimes we get the results. Sometimes we don't get the results the way we wanted them to. And sometimes we just don't get the results that we expected to, right? Um, all right. So this guy actually grew up on a farm. They didn't have cars there. Okay, again, made up story, but please, again, allow me, indulge me. Um, grew up in a farm. Now he's brought to the city. You have this, and this farm doesn't have cars and automobiles, so he's never seen one. You have a brand new job, 
with the skills that you have. And here's the type of clothes you're gonna wear. This is what we wear in the city, right? Um, slacks, white shirt, button down shirt with tie, these nice shoes, etc. He looks at himself, he's like, oh wow, this is strange. I'm not used to wearing these clothes. Now, where is the work? How do I get to work? Here is the car. Here, this will take you to work. You can get to work in this. Okay, great. We're leaving, bye, good luck. They leave, and he's like, what am I gonna do with this car? Where is the oxen? Where is the, or the horse? Like, it looks kind of like a carriage, but where are they? Like, how is this car going to move without the horse? He thinks this is something like a modern horse carriage or something like that, because it has the four wheels. So what does he do? He pushes, pushes, pushes from behind, does all the hard work to move the car. What he doesn't know is that all he needs to do is turn the ignition on, turn, turn the motor on. And that motor is going to move the car with not so hard work, with the hard work, the work needed to move the steering wheel, maybe, maybe um, you, know, you know, the turn signals and st stuff like that. Not that hard of work. It will move the car in the direction that he wants it to go. So the car is your career or life, the career, right? And that ignition, the motor, is the communication skills. All right. An MIT poll says that adults with communication, presentation, public speaking skills are 65% more likely to be successful. What is that number in your mind? What do you think that number is? How much more likely are professionals with these kind of strategic communication skills this is not even strategic communication just yet. How much more likely are they to be successful? Put in a number here in the chat box. Let's take a look. Let's see. What is the number that you think is important? Okay, 50%, I see. What else? Put, put something, 80%, yes. What else, what else, what else? 70 Great, keep coming, keep those numbers coming. 80, hi Philip, hi Sherry, 95, Carla, yes, yes. So yeah, I usually get an average of 65 to 85%, depending on which group I ask that. There was a group of Harvard alums, they, the average came out to be about 85%. Katrina, hi, 80%, yes. Now, I want you to write this down. Do not put this on the chat box. Ima the last time you got a promotion at work, what was the reason for that? Why did you get that promotion at work? This is like a fast-paced fast question. What was the reason? Just write the first thing. The last time you got a client, a new client, or last bunch of clients, what was the reason? The last time, or when you got your investors, a lot of entrepreneurs are here. A lot, you know, if you, when you got your investors, what was the reason? Why did you, what, what made those investors invest in you? Uh, okay, so cool. So Philip, you said I'm a co-owner. So right, um, in terms of uh, clients, what about clients or a win? What was the reason? A win for one of the litigations maybe or a new client, a new bunch of clients, what was the reason for you? Write that down. Anybody mind sharing in one or two words what were the reasons for these wins? Personal, personalization. Personalization, customization of what? The product, project, service? Is that what you meant, Joseph? I'm looking at the chat box here. What was the reason? If you want to write that down, why? Yes, knowing the individual. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, okay. Diligent preparation and long years of study and experience. Makes sense, Philip, totally. Yes, yes. So I'm hearing alignment of perceived value with their need. Ooh, I like that. Yes, yes, yes. So you produce your good product or service, and then what do you do? You're going to pitch it to them share it with them, sell it to them, right? Because you know this individual really well now or you, are, you align their needs, uh, like Elsie said, and you created an aligned product service to their needs. Philip worked really hard, right? 
But then he probably communicated that very efficiently and effectively to them. So hard work, when I say hard work, that means work your product, right? Work hard, work smart, everything. But everything does need enough hard work. And the communication. When I got Neiman Marcus, the largest luxury retailer, as my client, did I work hard? Yes. But what actually was a real winner in me getting them as my client? Communication skills. Right? Now, let me ask you this. What happened... When you lost the last client deal or one specific client deal or an investor um, deal, or if you are working for another organization, what happened when you didn't get that one promotion that you really wanted, or you didn't get that raise or that bonus that you did, you really wanted, or you didn't get that job that you really wanted, or you didn't get that client that you really wanted? What happened? What was the cause of it? Well, they didn't understand what you were so good at. You know, a lot of us think that we're really smart and they don't get it. Sure. A lot of us probably just think that there wasn't the right fit. And that is also true. But more likely than not, especially getting an investor, a client or that promotion, it's that communication skill. Work always has to be there. High quality work always has to be there. Yes. But then... Did we, for example, Elsie said, alignment of perceived value with their need and then communicating it, right? First, if you did not perceive their values correctly, that means you didn't listen properly. That is part of communication. You wouldn't be able to create a product or service that is aligned to, with them. And then even if you created a fantastic product or service, but you did not share that value, the perceived value in, with them in the right, concise, convi um, concise, articulate manner with conviction, the deal probably wouldn't go through, right? When you, when somebody doesn't get a promotion, what happens? They're working hard. Why did they not get the promotion? Somebody else got the promotion because most likely, I mean, they're producing good work. I'm not saying that this is a person who's not producing good work. They're producing amazing work, really, really promotion worthy work. But a lot of times, that perceived, not even perceived value, the value of what they're promoting, uh, is they are producing, is not seen by everybody who needs to see. The key decision makers are not seeing it. Even sometimes the boss doesn't see the full value. Okay? I'm just reading some of these. Most, um, so, okay. So Gordon said, polished and able to communicate, communicate capabilities. Philip says, most often intellectual property lawyers are not engaged because if you're, uh, I think you said punitive client is looking for free services or the client's expectations are unrealistic. Elsie said the perception of the value we would deliver at their need. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Great. Great. All right. So this is what I'm saying. A lot of times we kind of just blame it on others. They don't understand what I'm doing. They don't see the value. Why? Because either they're the clients or the investors or the bosses, because we're not communicating that in, in an effective way. Now let's get into strategic communication. What is it? It is not just presentation skills. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of people would think, I want to be a good presenter. Yes, that's great, that's very important. But strategic communication is way more, way beyond just presentation skills. It's a 360 degree communication. 360 degree communication, which needs to be effective, it needs to be consistent, it needs to be uh, timely, and it just needs to be concise, and you have to do it with conviction. Really, really important. So it's not just presentation skills, it is something that needs to be woven into the fabric of your everyday work, practically. Now, you need to communicate with a lot of people. I just kind of wanted to create this I know these are all these, um, it's probably like an art from some museum, but I just wanted to see, show you that you have to communicate with a lot of different people. There are key decision makers, there are key stakeholders, there are people that you work with, cross-functional teams. There are people in your life, in your work, who may or may not see you at all times, but they still need to hear from you and about you. And communication needs to be done about the strategy, the organization, the goals, the customers, uh, 
the management, the analysis, the planning, and a lot more, a lot of different things that need to be communicated to the right audience, okay? Now, what needs to be done when it comes to strategic communication? What does that entail? First, you want to share your ideas. You want to share your ideas, your thoughts, and so that you can start creating a project and bringing it to fruition. A lot of us are hesitant to share our ideas. What if it's a bad idea? What if they, you know, uh, gun it down? What if they make fun of me? A lot of us just share our ideas. Your team, your co-founder, your your co-president, um, your bosses, wherever. You know, I'm, I'm kind of talking both to the entrepreneurs or the organization or law firm owners or the firm owners or people who work for different corporations because we have a mix of audiences here. So we want to share your, our ideas. Sometimes we are hesitant to share our ideas even with our prospective clients or our clients, right? So sharing your idea is part of strategic communication. I hear from a lot of executives, Jyoti, you're absolutely right. There were so many great ideas I had, which I didn't share for various different reasons. Either I didn't share or I shared it, but it wasn't shared very effectively. And it, you know, this idea could have been a uh, multi hundreds of millions worth of uh, dollars worth of project, or it could be, it could have been a billion dollar business within my organization. Really, really important. So sharing your ideas effectively is really important. Don't hold it back. The timing is important, the consistency it is important. Who do you share it with and how do you share it with? Very important. Now, communicating with your cross-functional teams, your employees, communicating with all of these different, different groups and facets of, of your organization, whether you work for a lar large, small, or medium-sized organization is very important. Right time, right people. Right now, if you are in the product team, you need to constantly be talking to the marketing team and the sales team so that you keep getting the product, uh, you keep getting the customer feedback in. If that communication breaks, what happens? The product breaks. The product doesn't necessarily just break, but it actually crumbles. Because, like, um, like somebody here just said, you know, there is that misalignment of customer needs to the product. And then you need to communicate well with the finance teams and you need to communicate well with the ops teams, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you are in a different type of an organization, just apply it to whatever your organization is um, and what the needs of your organizations are, right? Sometimes you need to communicate really well, not sometimes, always, to your employees, people who report into you. Inspire them, give them the right um, direction for the project, the right vision for the project, right? So that they actually do their best work. A lot of times, us as bosses or managers or executives tend to be too, um, too uh, controlling, right? And we give them just a small sliver of the project without giving them the full big picture, without empowering our employees. And that is also a negative way to um, ineffectively communicate, right? So our employees don't do the quality and the magnitude of uh, work and the create the results that are needed. That's communication, right? That is very, very important. So what we are doing right now, we're talking about strategic 360 degree communication. And it's 360 degree, not in a circle, in a sphere, all around us, people all around us that we need to communicate with. Now you need to share your expertise within your organization, within your clients, within your industry. What happens when you share your expertise? When you share your expertise, you create visibility for yourself, your work, your impact. What does that do for you? Well, if you're in an organization as an employee, you know, People start seeing the value of what you're going to be creating, right? They start saying, oh my gosh, John is doing amazing work. He really needs to be, when the promotions come within the next eight months or one year, I think John is in close, um, uh, he's in close uh, running for those promotions. And I would really, really pound the table for John as his boss because he's been doing amazing work and he's also showing it to us, right? John was always, by, this, by the way, John was always doing amazing work, but it's just, about now, right now, he started sharing all the details of the work and the impact that work is generating, right? Now, if you start creating that visibility for yourself in your industry, 
people, maybe now John is not necessarily looking for a new job or maybe looking for a new job, but now people from other organizations say, oh my gosh, John's work is so good. We would love to hire him, right? They may just do an inbound call to get John on their teams in another organization. So he just got himself a new job a, with a better, paying, a better paying job, higher scale job, just because he created that visibility around the impact he's creating. Now, if you do that as an entrepreneur or, or, or the owner of your firm, right, what do you do? You get more clients. The clients see the amazing value and results you can produce. You produce for others and you can produce for them. You can create that service and you can really alleviate that problem for your clients. How This, this is kind of like part of marketing too, right? This is You have to kind of market yourself at all times. But it's not sleazy marketing. It's just kind of creating visibility. Remember that dark room that we were in, right? Where it was, it had everything, but it was so dark, nobody knew. That's what it is right now. You're doing all this amazing work, but it's dark. You're not shining that light on you. That light, when you shine that on you, creates that visibility. There is visibility in this world only when there is light. Right, so you need to shine that light on the work you are doing and the impact you're creating. I can't emphasize that enough. This is, if you take anything from this lesson today, this workshop today, this is what it's going to be. Please create that light on the work that you are doing and the impact you can create or generate in any organization or person's life. Very, very important. Only then will you be able to move forward, propel forward. And then, you know, selling to clients. Your strategic communication is about selling to clients, pitching to investors. Again, as business people or even as, as people who work in corporations, clients are not just the external clients. They could be also internal clients, right? Internal stakeholders, right? So you have to constantly sell your ideas, product, and service to them. And that's strategic communication. That goes with marketing, sales, pitching, Lead gen, everything comes together. And, you, and, and, and of course, the work and delivery of that also is very, very important. That's, that's one key part of the strategic communication that we have to do, right? And we all know about this one. There are some other strategic communications that we don't think about doing strategically. We need to build connections and relationships, right, within our organization and outside our organization and in our industry. It's who you know. And how well you have nurtured those relationships and how well you've taken care of other people, clients, investors, vendors, employees, peers, bosses, executives, whoever, or peers in the industry. How strong are those connections and relationships? And you have to constantly build them. How do you build them? With communication, right? Communication skills. Again, these are all very, very big topics in themselves, right? But I just want to, again, highlight all the different things that we have to do in this 360 degree communication, 360 degree spherical communication around our world, everything. So we have to kind of, we are the hub and these are all the different nodes, different nodes of these people that we have to constantly. It doesn't have to be like every single day you were outreaching to, you know, 10 people. It doesn't have to be that, but it has to be strategically done so that certain people you're connecting with once a week, certain people you're connecting with once a month, certain people you're connecting with once a year or twice a year, and that's fine. And you build those relationships and they know what you're doing and how you are, again, creating that impact and, and generating that value in that world or that organization. Helping and supporting others. That's part of communication. You know, so you can say that, um, all right, Elsa, here, um, this is your skill or this is my skill. Can I help you? I'm here to help you. What do you do with that? When you help and support others, you're creating that goodwill. You're building and nurturing that relationship. That's very, very important. And what happens? People get to know what you're really good at and also that you are a great person. Um, again, one of my MIT friends yesterday helped me on a project, and I was just so touched. The next time, if he ever needs any help from me, I would be the first one to ever help him back, right? Because he was very genuine. He was very, very uh, kind and very generous with his time and his advice. So the more we can help people within our networks or even outside our network, the better it is. I know you guys all help people, but also be more mindful of this, even at work. 
Now, communication, strategic communication will also help you to get people to see your point of view, right? A lot of times we have a different point of view from other people around us, and then we keep it to ourselves, thinking that, well, they have a very different point of view. They'll never see what I'm saying. And then we drop that. But the right way to communicate will help them get to see your point of view. How important is that? That is super duper important. Everybody that we work with, almost everybody, has a very different point of view from us, right? There are a few people who may have um, uh, an alignment or an overlap in the same way that we look at things or situations or solutions. But only when we communicate properly and effectively, that comes through and then we can find solutions together. We can influence people. Now, strategic communication is also very important for tooting your own form without blowing it. Again, you are in an organization. If you want to continue to grow, how do you have to do it? You have to kind of share those expertise, those wins, but you want to do it without blowing your own horn because nobody's going to like you. But a lot of us, what we do, you know what? It's just not considered very classy or sophisticated. They're all going to hate me if I speak too much about my wins or my victories or my expertise, and we don't speak about it. There are some very, very subtle, sophisticated ways to do it, and you must do it. If you don't do it, again, nobody knows what you're doing. And it's very important for you to have strategic communication to inform others, to inspire others, to influence others, and to get them to take action. And when I say others, others are all the different people that I have mentioned multiple times earlier in this presentation. This is extremely important. When I said 360 degree communication, it's not just people around us. And I did mention that you are the hub, you are the center point. So communication with self is extremely important. What are you telling yourself about the situation around you, about your business, about your career, about your life, about yourself? This is the conversation we have with ourselves. The negative conversation, a lot of negative conversation is very, very natural. We all do it. That negative conversation that just keeps drawing us, pulling us down. So we need to change that negative conversation to the positive more uplifting conversation. Again, this is a huge topic. This is a huge topic on mindset and timing. Um, but again, I just want to introduce or touch base on these topics. Um, uh, yes, just so that you guys are all aware. I just wanted to share, I, I, will, I have a gift for you later on, which I'll share because um, there you can get a lot of more insights into a lot of these topics in more detail. All right, communication with family, very, very important. You have a big project coming up and you, you're completely MIA. What is your husband or wife or significant other going to say? What are your kids going to say? You forgot to communicate with them, right? Well, honey, I'm going to be very busy for the next two weeks. Do you mind taking care of the kids or the household or everything else? I apologize. I'll definitely make it up once I'm out of this deadline, project deadline. Sure, that's good communication. Your, your spouse and your kids, and other family members will definitely be very supportive. You have an ailing um, parent or grandparent and you are busy for these two weeks or certain time, tell your sibling, if you have a sibling, brother, sister, I'm going to be so busy, but do you mind taking care of mom? And then I will come back and I will relieve you and then I'll take care of mom or dad or whoever else, right? Communicating with the family for on a lot of different things. I'm speaking a little bit more on the professional front, but. Communicating with the family doesn't go away because there are so many different interactions with the family. I'm not going into the, in, into the personal side, but that is very, very important. All right, I'm going to pause here before we go into the workshop mode. I'm going to pause here and see if there are any questions. Uh, yes, there will be. Okay, so are there any questions? Does anyone want to ask any burning questions right now? Let's see. Okay, Philip, I'm going to read what you just said because I haven't read it. Okay, we just had a situation which meets your point. In the course of representing a client, the client's expectations of cost were unrealistic. I advise my attorneys to call the client and not to and to not send emails or text. Thank you very much. Very good. My attorney sent an email. The client got very upset. Then the attorneys called the client and straightened the matter out. Tomorrow, I plan to speak with the client on, on telephone. All right, great job. Okay, for straightening out the situation, Philip, may I advise you 
to speak on video on Zoom or whatever video format you want to do because telephone again is very very uh, difficult. It's like email. It's better than email, but I am actually quite grateful for this whole 2020 um, uh, communication format when Zoom became the main mode of communication because now we can connect better with people. Yeah, we're not live, but again, when you see people's faces, their expressions, their voice, intonation, their tone, their presence, their energy, their body language makes a huge difference. So, Philip, if you were to talk with your front friend, uh, sorry, your clients, on a video format, that would be much more conducive to this this specific situation. Um, I'm not sure where you live. I think you live in the New York area. Well, everybody here is in New York. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I speak to a lot of global audiences. So yeah, I forgot this is all New York audiences, New York, tri-state area. Okay, thank you for sharing that story, Philip. I really appreciate that. Now, any other questions before I move on to our workshop? Now, you will need a paper and pencil, a pen, grab a drink, Cheers. Get into thinking mode. Here are, now we're gonna get into goal setting for this year. What are your professional goals? And as you are talking about professional goals, you can also write down or think about your personal goals. I wanna move to this other city. I wanna, you know, you know, relationship wise, you could write that down too, or I wanna buy a certain house or a car or send kids off to college or whatever else it is. Um, I know everybody is in a different age and stage in their lives. And in professional goals, be as specific as you can in one year and in five years. Write that down. I want to get, I don't know, um, so many dollars, dollars, dollars in my revenues, so many clients. I want to get that promotion. I want to increase my income to that level. I want to get a new job, whatever it is for you. One year and five years. Please write that down. And if anybody is so inclined, feel free to share it. Or if you don't want to share it with the rest of the world, you're welcome to just send me a personal um, uh, chat here, and I will not share your name. Okay. So Jocelyn says, one year, I want my company to get Series B investment. Fantastic. Five year, I want my company acquired. What do you do, Jocelyn? That's fantastic. What is your uh, product or service? And who's your customer base? Now, as you guys are writing that down, visualize what it would look like when you accomplish your goal. What does that mean for you? You're going to be so happy. You're going to feel so successful, like you've achieved this. Uh, you're going to feel so elated. A lot of the worries are taken care of. You're going to be, your words, your name is going to be written in golden letters, whatever it means for you. Um, your family is going to have um, a lot more resources. Maybe you're going to be in this fantastic location that you always wanted to be. Maybe you'll take more vacations, barring any restrictions from COVID. You know, certain countries in the world um, are starting to travel and mingle a lot more than we do here and in, 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 in Europe. It's pretty interesting how different countries have managed their, their COVID situations. All right, so what would you feel? What would you feel when you accomplish your goal? Close your eyes, imagine it, imagine the feeling, imagine everything, like imagine a picture that's running through your head. This is visualization exercise. The more you visualize, the more your goals can, will come to fruition along with your hard work and your communication skills. Then what would happen if you don't accomplish your goal? What pain would you feel? What would happen in your life? What I'm trying to get you to is identifying your why, right? Why have you, are you working so hard on this one particular goal? And what would happen when you don't achieve it? That will just kind of give you more fuel to put in both those work in both the pillars, the strategic communication, as well as your product, your, your work product. Now, Jocelyn, you, have, you said I... Oh, I'm an ad tech platform, platform with services company as a product manager, employee number two. Oh, awesome. Um, Jocelyn, we should talk. Is it like Facebook ads or what kind of ads are these? Or are these more media ads? Okay, now, when you want to get Series B investment, what does that entail? Huge, huge, huge communication, 
right? One of the things I think I said, building connections and that is networking. Building connections is networking and relationships. Huge, 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 tremendous communication skills, right? Within your firm, right? Within your team to create the fantastic product presentation and then with the investors. And then showing traction with your customers. That is a lot of communication too, right? And you are an ad tech, so what are ads? Ads are a way to communicate with your customer, right? Communication, communication. You Now if you start, now that your eyes are open to this world of communication, everything that you say, do, or believe, or act upon is communication in your life. Just think about it. I just want you to be more mindful about it now. And any thoughts that are going up here, it's all communication, communication to self, right? All right, now we go back. Has everybody written down their goals? You guys have your goals? Can you please let me know? Yes, I have my goals. Yes, yes, yes. Please type it in. Thank you for everybody who has been interacting. Really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, all right, keep moving on. Now, Take another page, break your annual goals, or you had the two year, one year goal? One year goal. Break your one year old goal into three months, six months, and 12 months. Hi, Padma, I just saw you. Nice to see you. Um, and put them, so what are your goals for three months, so six months from now, and 12 months from now? I'm glad we're doing this in January because the year has just started. How many of you guys make resolutions? and break resolutions. If it's yes and yes, give me yes and yes. If you don't make resolutions, then just give me a no. If you give, if you make res resolutions, yes. And if you don't break them, then just say no. I'm just curious. I make resolutions and break them. So no more resolutions. So I go into goal setting like that. Yes and no. John, don't break your resolutions. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. Hi, Claudette, nice to see you. Very good. All right, so three month goals, six month goals, 12 month goals. Great, Jocelyn, that's awesome. Now you're going to write down the tasks or the milestones next to them, one, two, three, four, five, what I mean, it doesn't have to be five milestones, it could be two milestones, that's fine, it could be one, it could be seven. Um, your, and then for the next six months, what are your tasks and milestones, like bigger ones? And then for the next 12 months, what are your tasks and milestones? You're going to write that down. We are in the workshop format to help you create a, a, a map. Sorry, something just happened and I felt like I lost the connection, but I still have the connection. I'm still here. Do you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Okay. All right, I'm back. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. That was very strange. I apologize. I have no idea. I was just typing to one question and answer to the question. Here we are. Now, remember, you have the two pillars, the work, the milestones you're going to do, the work, and then the communication. For all these milestones, for your three, six, and 12 month goals, who are all the people you're going to have to communicate with? So in three month area, in six month area, and in 12 months area, write this down. Actually, you should probably just create another call. Here's what you're gonna do. Okay, take enough, a fresh page and create two lines in the middle of the page so that you have three columns, okay? Fresh page, two lines in the middle of the page so that you have three columns you can write down. And now write down all the people that you need to communicate with, ideally in a, in a chronological order. So first I'm going to have to communicate with my team to create this product or update my product, update my website, update my marketing campaign, update our proposal, update a presentation, whatever it is. 
then I'm going to have to um, connect with, I don't know, 30 investors to find three meetings. Or I have to connect with my MIT alum friends um, and Jonathan Gang because they run the MIT Enterprise Forum. Maybe they'll connect me to investors. I'm just taking one example here. Or if you're working in a corporation, you have to make sure you can communicate with the cross-functional teams, name everybody or name every department that you have to communicate with. And then, you, then the next people that are the managers, the bosses, boss, you have to be in um, frequent communication with, people who report into you, um, you want to communicate with them. So here is a list of a lot of people that I have listed, a lot of people and entities that you have to communicate with. Clients, cross-functional teams, finance, marketing, products, sales, technology, operations, others, if I miss somebody, uh, PR maybe. Then who else do you need to communicate with on the right-hand side? These are all important. I just had to break them down in two columns for readability. Executives, the board, the boss, and sometimes it's the boss, the boss's peers. They need to know about the amazing work you were doing. The vendors, really important. Vendors and business partners. You don't always have vendors, but sometimes you have business partners. Um, direct reports, the HR people, the people in your industry, prospects, old colleagues. Yes, that's part of your network, old bosses, peers, your family, and other. If I miss somebody, please do let me know. If there's somebody else you see that, that doesn't fall into the category that categories that I've listed here, please share it in the chat box. I can always update this list. All right. Um, yes, uh, John, uh, Philip said something else. Philip, um, there are a couple of gifts I have, which I will just email them to you. Um, Philip said this. Advertising the words used are very, very critical to the ongoing business. For example, if a trademark is selected that is too close to a competitor, a claim is made which cannot be supported. The result, especially for a new business, can be very costly. Yes, what we claim, what we put out there, very, very important. That is all communication and advertising and marketing. It's all communication. Thank you for that note, Philip. Uh, okay, anything else? Yes, okay. Digital creative agencies. Um, yeah, I, you're right. I kind of put them in vendors and partners. So digital creative agencies, absolutely, you're right. Anybody else that you think that we need to communicate with? Vendors are not just suppliers, but any other external parties that we would work with. All right, moving on. Thank you for that, Anastasia. Now, what communication challenges do you see when you communicate with any of these? Maybe communicating with the boss might be a little challenging because they don't always see your point of view and you need to influence them on this one particular area. Maybe that's a challenge. Maybe communicating with your team is a little bit of a challenge. Sometimes this one particular person, because they do not follow your direction. Okay, that could be a challenge. Maybe communicating with a certain type of a client could be a challenge because maybe they just don't see the value, the perceived value, like Elsie said. And how do you bring it across to them? Maybe they're not even the right client for you. I don't know. Maybe communicating to the prospects is a challenge. What, whatever, just identify the challenges. Just be very, very mindful of it. Be honest and truthful to, you, to yourself because this is for you. Brand consultants, absolutely. Brand consultants are important too. Again, I would put them in the vendor category, vendor or partner category. But thanks for sharing that, Gail. Legal, yeah, legal, I could probably definitely put that. Um, legal is a good, because a lot of times legal is within your team. And I will write down the, yeah, and legal communication is very, very hard. I once spoke to a bunch of lawyers, a similar presentation, and I had to completely up-level my legal jargon. Absolutely, thank you for sharing that. So digital, brand, um, consultants, legal, okay, I'm taking notes. Excellent. Now you have the challenges down, be honest and true to yourself, right? And even after this presentation is over, because we have limited time, I invite you to go back to our notes, your notes, and go back and fill them in. Something else may come up tomorrow or next week. Please write that down. Finance, yes. Did I not have finance up there? Finance I did have up there, yes, but I didn't have legal, but thank you, Padma. 
All right, now, what are you going to do to overcome these challenges? What are you going to do to overcome these challenges? Maybe you will learn to become a better influencer with your boss. Maybe you will be learn to become a better, more um, confident and articulate communicator with your um, clients. Maybe you will become more empathetic. Maybe you will become a better presenter. Maybe you will figure out your timing better. Maybe you will create allies. What are some of the, how are you going to overcome these challenges? Because these challenges, maybe you're too shy. Maybe you don't want to speak with people, right? A lot of times, again, we think communicating with a lot of the people is such a hassle. It's a lot of times we think it's a waste of time and much rather sit there and do my work. I do great work. I'm, a, I'm much rather just do my work and my good work, my hard work will speak for itself. Most of us have seen that it doesn't speak for itself. All right, thank you so much, Mercedes. I think there will be a replay, so there is more in this presentation later. Um, so please uh, take a look at the replay because we're going to talk about seven ways to be an effective communicator and then we will have uh, open, um, open question and answers. So thank you for joining. If you can stay, please stay. And I do have a lot of gifts in the end. So uh, Mercedes, if you want to shoot me an email, here is my email address. And I will email you the links to the gifts. Um, because, okay, here are the gifts. So let me just jump to the gifts for the people who are leaving. Okay. So this is a free course on speaking with confidence for massive influence. Speech.thinkific.com forward slash courses forward slash free course. And we, yes, thank you. And I understand that, guys, we are at 7 o'clock. We're going to start wrapping up in 10 minutes and then open it up to questions. It is a one and a half hour long conversation or workshop. The other thing is I wanted to share with you is that I have a Facebook group. It's free, but I share a lot of these, a um, lot of detailed tips on a lot of different areas of strategic communication. Again, in an hour and a half, it's very hard to cover a lot of different things. We didn't talk about content. We didn't talk about structure. We, we, we couldn't go into details, but I just wanted to create this lay of the land for you. So please join that free Facebook group. Um, I will share the details of that. Again, maybe John can um, send it out to all of you guys later. All right. So, um, all right. So write down what you will do to overcome these challenges. If you could please type in here what challenges you foresee and what can you do to overcome these challenges. You will not only hold yourself accountable, but you will also inspire other people. Maybe they're not thinking about, about that challenge or they are thinking about a similar challenge and feeling badly about themselves, but then they'll see, ah, oh, somebody else has this challenge. I'm not alone, okay? So if you wouldn't mind, maybe share a challenge if you are okay with that, or at least share how you're going to overcome these challenges. What are you going to do or what are you going to grow into to overcome that challenge? What skill are you going to develop for yourself? Um, so I would love to hear that. Please write that down here in the chat. Um, I'm going to move to the next section. So, so far what we've done, we've talked about, we've talked about what is strategic communication and why it's very, very important for you to really reach your career and business potential and goals. Then we talked about all the different areas where you should be implementing strategic communication. You need to be planning it, you need to be executing it, you need to be very um, uh, placing every aspect, every person, every node, identify them and place them strategically. I need to reach out to the exec, depending on what you do and who you're working with, to the executive team once a quarter, maybe. They need to see what I'm doing and how am I gonna do it? That's another story that, like, that's bigger than today's scope, but, um, or I need to be talking to the legal department or the finance department at least once a month so that they know all the amazing things that I'm doing with my product or project. And next time when I need a budget increase, I can get it from that. All right, some of the things that people said, articulating uh, that they need to get better at, articulating a compelling ask of advisors to help me frame a list of prospects. Great. And then I'll see after that, what happens when you get the list of prospects? I like that you're working with your advisor. Ooh, advisors is a good one. I'm going to add that in my list up there. Gail, to be able to effectively communicate the importance of my startup. Oh, so important. 
this is part of marketing and selling, right? And we have to always do it. Even if you're not an entrepreneur, you're constantly marketing and selling what? Who? Your ideas and yourself, right? If you're looking for a new job, what are you doing? You're marketing and selling. All right. So now moving on, we're going to talk about seven ways to clearly bring your point across. First and foremost, tailor your conversation or your presentation or your pitch to the audience. And a lot of you said that here. Elsie said that, Philip said that, a couple others also said that, that we tailored it to our audience, right? I think Gail said it. So that is very, very important. Most of us, what happens is I have this great product service. I'm this great person and I'm going to just pitch, 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 right? I have this great expertise, but it's not about me. It's not about your product. It's about them. And when I, again, when I say product service, product or service, it doesn't mean just your tangible product or your service that you're selling, it could be your expertise. It could be your idea. It's how you can help them. What's in it for them? This is a term I learned at MIT. What's in it for them? Always remember that. Tailor it. Customize, actually. Customize. Somebody else used that word, so I'm going to use the same word. Customize. Second is the delivery. How do you clearly bring your point across? Delivery is extremely important, right? your energy, your body language, your expressions, your voice, the speed, everything, your articulation, your confidence, your conviction, everything is your delivery. Very, very important. Third is the organization and flow and the transition of your entire message, keeping it succinct, keeping it flowing well, keeping it organized, keeping the content, right? Keeping the content. So this is content. In, uh, inadvertently, everybody, not everybody, but somebody will come back to me. And, but the content is really important. Yes, content is very important. It's, it's, it's the message. Content is your message. And I think everybody understands that. But I'm talking about everything else around the content, which a lot of times we don't think about. So the content is definitely very important. But then the organization, the flow, and the transition is extremely important. Getting audience feedback at all times. Very, very important before that conversation or presentation, during and after. I think a lot of you guys alluded to that. When I say audience, audience is anybody you're speaking with, right? So that's extremely, extremely important. So it could be one person, it could be that client or investor, or it could be a bunch of clients. Let's say you do Facebook ads or you have some marketing campaign or you're pitching to a bunch of prospects. They're all your audiences and you need to get, get feedback. That feedback will allow you to customize, tailor your product or service or expertise in a way that meets their needs, just like Elsie said earlier. I think Elsie said that. Storytelling, super duper important. Nobody really, well, now people are starting to talk about it. But earlier, about five to eight years ago, nobody used to talk about storytelling. Storytelling is very, very important in terms of bringing a point across in in a very humane way because stories have emotion, they have scenarios, they have characters. And I'm not talking about fake stories. Sometimes a fictional story is okay, but you can use real business stories. You can use real custom, customer success stories. You can use your own success story. You can use your inspiration stories. And those are all very important. Very, very important. Summarizing. Summarizing your key points through the conversation, through the presentation, very important. What did I do from point one to point two? And when I moved into these seven ways to clearly bring your point across, I summarized what have we talked about so far, right? Summarizing is very important because what? Human, us humans, we have monkey brains. They're all over the place. One minute you're thinking about this and then another minute, you know, your brain is off thinking about something else, some, a thought or a comment just triggered another idea in your head and you're off to la la land. Not you, but even your audience. So you have to bring them back together and we want to summarize frequently. And then call to action. Call to action is really important because most of the conversations are wasted if there is no call to action. Call to action could be, I would love for you to buy my product or can we set up another meeting or um, can, I, I, can I do a follow up call, Mr. Investor? What are your thoughts about my product, my project, my company? Um, Mr. Boss, when is my next pro or like, you know, these are the KPIs for my next promotion. Let's touch base again. Or can Mr. Finance pe people 
what else needs to be done for my budget? Or can you please allocate the budget of whatever you need? So that's a call to action. Or for the team, okay, these are the different tasks for the team. And let's all come back together in two days after having done all the things that we each one of us had to do. Call to action, extremely important. Here is a quick summary of what we need to do. All right, now, I'm jumping on to my guests. So what we just did, summary, right? Speaking, talking my, walking my own talk. Summary, I'm just gonna quickly summarize. We talked about seven ways to clearly bring your point across, tailoring it to your audience, delivery, the organization and flow, and the content has to be tailored to your audience. How you present yourself, how you show up has to be tailored to your audience. Summarize, call to action, audience feedback, and storytelling. Very important, all of them. And again, this doesn't tell you everything about strategic communication because strategic communication is a big topic. And all of these can go into much, much, much detail and depth to actually be able to do them correctly. All right, yes. Um, here is the information. Um, somebody asked for my email address. I will retype my email address here. Um, and you guys can just take a sc screenshot of this um, page or take a picture of this page. This is a very important free Facebook website, uh, Facebook page or Facebook group where I share a lot of these informations on a you know weekly by weekly basis. So you definitely want to join this Facebook group if you want to stay abreast of a lot of things that I coach and teach on. Here is my email address, jyoti at post.harvard.edu. We're going to be opening it up to questions soon. So if you have a question, please type it in in the Q&A section. We are at 710. Here is gift number two. Take a screenshot or a picture of this. Here is a free uh, mini course, Speak with Confidence for Massive Influence. So type this in, type this URL in. And maybe I can copy it, or maybe I, as you guys are doing the questions, maybe I can um, put it in the chat box. But take a picture of this so that you have it. Here is gift number three. I have a free coaching session, only I have four openings. So if you would like a free coaching session with me, we can talk about your 2021 goals. We can talk about any specific communication problem that you're having in your career or your life. Um, mostly career or in your business, um, just shoot me an email. Here's my email. Somebody else also asked for my email. Shoot me an email, and I'd be delighted to do a, a, a communicate. Sorry, a coaching session with you. You're not able to see the chat content. Okay, so uh, Eunice, I'm not sure why you can't see the chat content, but you take a screenshot of the screen of the screen here. That way, you can reach out to me if you're not able to see the email. Is that why you're saying that? All right, to get in touch with me, I don't know why I put my phone number there, but I did, fine. Um, you have my email, email is the best way to reach me. All right, opening it up to questions. I am very impressed that I was able to keep time. Usually I go way over time. All right, Eunice, um, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you about being able to see the chat content. Uh, send us a copy of the presentation. Um, I think there's a replay of the presentation. Uh, so. I think ja uh, Gang or John will send it to you. What other questions do we have here? Yes, I shared my email. My email again is jyoti at post.harvard.edu. Again, here are the three gifts. There is a free coaching session with me. I can help you talk about any of the communication strategies, anything that you are having a hard time with, or helping you identify the communication goals to, so that you can reach your 2021 goals. Okay, so I only have four openings. So act fast, the first four people will get in. Um, I have a free mini course, Speak with Confidence for Massive Influence. Take a screenshot of that. And definitely join this Facebook group because I share uh, lots of insights, tips, strategies, best practices here. It's free and it's a great community. All right, so I'm going to, so Rachel, uh, so Rachel says that you may not be clicking on chat. Maybe you're clicking on Q&A. Okay, I'm going to look at stopping my screen share. I am going to look at the Q&A. Are there risks? So let's see. Uh, somebody said, I joined the webinar a few minutes late. Will we receive the presentation and recording via email after? I think John is, yes, there is a recording and John might be sending, John or gang might be sending that to you via email. 
or another format, I'm not sure. So you should be able to get that. All right, Gordon's question. How to communicate with coworkers who are competitive and overly critical of what you say? Another question from Gordon is, are there risks to communicating your achievements to your big bosses' bosses? How do we do without risk? All right, these are all very big and deep questions. Let's see. Uh, how do you communicate with coworkers who are competitive and overly critical of what, what you say? Yeah, excellent question. So first of all, you want to come with empathy. This is very, very important. You want to come with empathy and you want to come with a position of, uh, of higher energy and a higher being. And what I mean by that is you're already aware that these are the people who are going to be critical of what you say. So going in with that awareness is really going to help you not get defensive because when we get defensive, we lose our power as a communicator. So that, that is very so the second thing this is really important does that make sense so coming in with elevating yourself just from the mindfulness at a much higher energy level and um cognition level than that they are because they are being critical of you because they are um insecure about themselves right if somebody is very supportive, they are critical or they're constructively critical in a very different way. Most people who are critical, they're usually insecure, right? So having that higher level of cognition is going to help you not get defensive. Very, very two important points. Third thing you can do is if they ask or they're critical, invite them for an open dialogue. Oh, so let's say Gail said something to you. Gail, that's an interesting comment. Tell me a little bit more about why you think that my solution would not work. I would love to hear more so that we can make it together, better together as a team, or I can go back and make it better for our customers or whatever it is. Ask questions, but ask them again from a place of higher cognition. I'm not going into a lot of the other um, cognitive um, components of conversation because this is the MIT highly analytical group but there is there is that aspect of us building relationships and us being in this world which is just very very different from what we just see and feel um, and I'm not going to talk about that better together yeah so because when thank you Rachel Rachel said I love the words better together because then you are really um, reducing like cutting off that cord and that power tension from them so these are the three things that you could do right away. Again, this is a much bigger conversation because clearly you have tension between this person and you, and it needs to be um, dissipated. It needs to be alleviated. It needs to be just completely diffused. That would take a longer conversation. So I can't go into that right now, but those th three things are very important to do. And you not getting defensive is going to be really, really critical. Second. Are there any other questions you guys want to type in here uh, in the Q&A? Uh, please type in any questions in the Q&A. Are there um, risks to communicating your achievements to your bosses? Bosses, how do we do it without risk? Yes, there are risks for any kind of communication. But it could be done very strategically. First of all, not going around your boss is a great idea. So what I'm saying is do not go around your boss, generally speaking, intentionally at least, right? Um, maybe you let your boss know that, you know, our team did such a phenomenal job, our team did it. Wouldn't it be great if, um, what, what's the boss's name, Mark, also knew about it so that he would feel relieved and feel proud of our team. That's a great way to share your achievements as a team. And sometimes when you're talking about it, you can also say the team produced this and this is what I did, A, B, and C. So that's one way to mitigate those risks. Once in a while, you can run into your boss's boss, right? You know, maybe you were in the same elevator or maybe it was in the cafe or wherever else and always have that small elevator pitch in mind. It's not like a typical elevator pitch, but instead of just about the success of your last project or Again, there's a very strategic way to, uh, but those are some important tips. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say, 
while I do have a lot of free resources and gifts that I shared with you, please do take advantage of them. But if you want, you know, actual coaching, actual training and fast paced acceleration of your skills and accountability and very customized coaching, we have a very, very comprehensive training program. And the focus of that training program is transformation for you. Transformation for you from who you are as a communicator right now into becoming a strategic communicator so that it's kind of like the back of your hand. Imagine when you were three years old and you didn't know how to swim. And then now when you go into the pool, how do you feel? You feel it's natural. When you were five years old or seven years old or six years old and didn't know how to ride that bike without the training wheels. And now when you get on a bike, it's like second nature. When you were 16 years old, didn't know how to drive the car and you were nervous and anxious and you had to think about it, et cetera. And now you get in a car and it's just like second nature. You don't have to think about it. That's what we do in the training for you in terms of strategic communication skills. And it's again, 360 degree communication. So if that's of interest, shoot me an email. Um, I'd be delighted to tell you more about it. Okay. Now, um, how do you maintain the higher cognition to avoid reactionary or unstrategic communication? Great question, Jocelyn. Okay. So if you don't think that this is woo woo, um, I will go into it, but I'll go into it from the point of view of science. So who knows Einstein? Anybody know Einstein? Who has heard of E is equal to MC squared? E is equal to MC squared, right? So E is equal to MC squared. The gist of that is that everything in this world, in this universe is energy, right? Um, we're all energy too. I mean, of course there's a lot of energy inside of us, but then also we're made of cells. Cells are then made of molecules and then atoms and then atoms have electrons, protons and electrons are vibrating at energy. So we are a lot more energy than even mass. So when you burn a paper, a sheet of paper that looks like mass, but when you burn it, you release energy. What does E is equal to MC squared say? That nothing, energy can never be destroyed. It just changes form, right? So everything is energy. It turns into heat energy, fire, uh, light energy, and then carbon. That's what paper, which was tangible, turns into. Once you burn it, it changes form. So everything is energy. Now, this is a very big topic, Jocelyn. I couldn't uh, address it here. And again, I'm not even sure if you know it's the right audience, but I'm just gonna try to answer that. You want to, when you want to get to that higher cognition, cognitive level, you want to understand that every human comes from, has their own journey. They may seem like not so nice right now, or you might think, why do we think like that? What, like their reality is wrong, but their reality is actually their perception, right? And it comes from their upbringing, their conditioning, their experiences of life, their culture, whatever their culture is, and yours comes from your upbringing, your conditioning, your culture, your experiences. We all carry these baggages. Um, and I'm keeping it only limited to this part. There's just so much more which I can't share. And I'm not like, I can talk about this on a separate phone call. Now, what you want to know is they are humans, right? They're humans. We're all, you know, kind of like similar, very, very similar. And be mindful of their, their history. You, you may not know everything that they come with, but just be mindful that everybody has that baggage and package that they carry with. And that's why we have these certain lenses that we look at the world with, right? They might be looking at the world with blue colored lenses and you look at the world with these rosy lenses, right? We look at the world very differently and a lot of things that we end up not seeing, right? Or perceiving differently. So be mindful. So don't think anything negatively about anybody because of that, then that way you know that you have a wider perspective on other humans. You have a more, uh, you have a deeper understanding and greater empathy on, about other people around you. And that helps you elevate the level of cognition. Meditation also helps a great deal with that. I'm not going, meditation is not a woo-woo term anymore these days. So really, really important. But there's so much more that goes into it, which I can't talk about right now. 
but happy to jump on another call to help you uh, later. I hope that was helpful. I was just kind of trying to keep it to a very MIT-esque conversation here. All right, any other questions we have here? Uh, Rachel said, I have found approaching people with a peaceful demeanor, give them more space. Can you share if you use this approach? And what do you say? And what do you say in a peaceful style versus? Oh, so true. Thank you so much, Rachel. Very, very true. So the way you approach people in a non-attacking, non-defensive, non-offensive way is going to really create better relationships, great space for you guys to collaborate, and um, great space for you guys to start working together and understanding together and diffusing those tensions. Very, very important. People will be more amenable to anything that you have to say based on that and then your tone of voice. Extremely important. Extremely important. A lot of times I ask my audiences or my clients to practice what you're going to say. We always tend to practice only the presentations, but we should practice important conversations also, even one-on-one -on -one conversations, so that we say the right thing and so that we say it the right way. It's not what you say, it's how you say it is critical. What you say is very important. You, you know how many people are well-wishers and they'll come to you with amazing criticism and all it does is deflates you, right? And then you start this negative conversation about yourself. Only, and they were not saying anything wrong. They, they were well-intending, maybe well-intending, maybe not well-intending, but what their message was, was actually right. Well, you need to do this in this way. But if they had said it in a more amicable, friendly, non-offensive mode, tone, you would have loved it. You would have actually taken it and run with it and helped that feedback transform you and not created that unnecessary tension between you and that person. All right. Are there tricks to getting on to the next question? Are there tricks to get into a non-defensive headspace when critiqued? You know, um, similar question here. Uh, I think I have answered this. If you think I have not answered, just write back to me. Again, going with a higher, sometimes, you know, practice this in your meditation, in, in your morning ritual every day to get to a higher cognitive level so that as I was talking to Rachel or Jocelyn, I can't remember who, that you can actually understand that all humans come with these um, journeys and packages secondly elevate yourself and your self-esteem and that can happen with affirmations and that can happen with again meditation visualization and positive self-talk again that's a much deeper topic but i'm just leaving you with that yes and then when somebody gives you a critical space critical comment you know what when you are in that elevated headspace or mindset you will remember or remind yourself to not react to it. Reaction is terribly bad. It's ter terribly bad. Reaction is bad. It's not going to do you any, any service. It's going to be disservice to you. So instead of reacting, you don't even need to react. Oh, okay. So let's say Rachel said something to me. Rachel, that's an interesting point. Ask them a question. Come at it with the point of view of how you can get better. Right. And then what you can do is take away the negativity from their comment, the the tension, the, the sarcasm or whatever else is in their comment. Take it away. Take the words, the message. Right. If there is any meat to it. Sorry. If there is any um, substance to it for you to become better or make your work better, take that and move on and then erase it out from your memory that that incident even happened because if you keep it in your memory then you it's going to come back to haunt you and you will keep feeling badly about it that how dare he spoke to me like that how dare he or she criticized me so badly now i'm leading into one more thing which is forgiving most traditions in the world talk about forgiving and, uh, and forgetting and forgiving and forgiving is very, very important. So now you have somebody said something meanly to you. This is very important. And you hold on to it. And then it regurgitates in your head, you know, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, whenever, daily basis. And then your, your mind space is completely changed, right? From a good mood, you sink into a bad mood. So it's very important for you to forgive them. 
So if somebody said, if Sarah said this to me, you know what, I love the message. That was very thoughtful of her. Her tone of saying it was probably not right. I understand she might be jealous. Maybe she doesn't like me. It's okay. It's absolutely okay. But I appreciate that message that she gave me because I really do need to become more organized or I really do need to become or articulate or I really do need to be, I don't know, whatever that feedback was. And then just I forgive her for the way she said it to me. Why is forgiveness very important? I did not understand this for the longest time, but now I will tell you. Remember I said everything is energy, we're energy. Our mind space, our thoughts, everything is energy, right? Now, when you, energy is kind of like this. I'm just going to use this as an analogy. When you have a pipe, pipe has what, right? Going into, um, you know, the, the household pipes, etc. Let's just think about that. The pipe that brings water into your house. If that water has holes in it, what's going to happen? It's going to leak out, squirt out. And when you open the faucet, it's going to, the flow is going to be very, very low, very less, right? What happened? There was leakage because of the holes. When we hold on grudges, when we become defensive, when we have these negative feelings for somebody else or even for ourselves, or if we don't forgive others, those are the pierced holes in our, um, in our um, tube or in our um, pipe of energy, of our physical energy not physical energy, in, in, in our module of energy, right? And that's draining the energy that we need for strong analytical creative work, for energy we need to give to our, our um, families, the energy we need to give to ourselves, right? It's going to drain. Once you forgive and forget people, sorry, once you forget and forgive people, you will see amazing results because that will not come back to haunt you. Okay, so that was a very, very long answer to that one short question I got. But um, yeah, a shorter answer wouldn't do justice to it. All right, excellent. Nonviolent communication is a protocol for training and neutralizing day-to-day uh, -day conflicts. Yes, thank you very much. And I come from a very, very nonviolent culture. Um, you know, God, Mahatma Gandhi was all about nonviolent, nonviolence, and um, you know, I followed Jainism, which is all about nonviolence. So that's why I said sorry when I said need because that's a very violent thing. Sorry, apologize. So thank you, nonviolent, non-attacking. Consider everybody is equal. Consider everybody is like you, and that's where diversity comes into play. Also, it's not just about you know our culture or our skin color or male, female, etc. but the diversity in thoughts, right? And we need to appreciate them and we need to accept them and we need to be thankful for them. Um, so, so that's really, really important. We are at 7.30. Anything else I missed? John, did you want to come on um, camera and let me know if there's anything else I need to address? How do we maintain higher? Okay, we answered that. Okay. Are there tricks to... Okay. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay. All right. I think I've covered all the questions. Um, Jody, that was wonderful. That was truly a master class. We really appreciate you coming in and, and sharing your wisdom with us this evening. Uh, I took plenty of notes and I'm, I'm really inspired for my career trajectory as a result of that. So thank you. Thank you so much. I hope all of the attendees um, got at least half as much value as I did because it was extremely valuable. So thank you, thank you so much, DOT. And to all the attendees, we'll be getting out uh, a link to the recording and any presentation materials that GOT is willing to share. Um, uh, look for that in your inbox over the next few days. Thank you so much, John. Great. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.